Back in there? Okay. Hi. Um, that's supposed to say something about CryptoCat or whatever, but I guess I have a palm tree. <laughs> right. Uh, the palm tree symbolizes the peace of mind that comes with developing encryption software. That's that's why it's there. Hi, uh, my name is Nadim. Oh, there we Okay, cool. Hi, uh, my name is Nadim. I'm here to talk to you about CryptoCat, which is my piece of software that I've been working on with a bunch of volunteers for the past two years. Um, I had slides, but I thought I would just talk without slides so you can focus on what I'm saying more. I hope is the case. Um, CryptoCat started, uh, and it's, it's, it started two years ago, and we've had a mission since then um, to make encryption more accessible. So very simply, what we want to do is we want to make it easier for people to use uh, chat systems that are private, that, that preserve your privacy, that encrypt your conversations automatically. And the reason we want to do this is because if you're someone who wants to use encryption software, and by encryption software, I mean um, you know a, a program that you install and it encrypts your messages so that when you're talking to someone, uh, your messages, if they're intercepted, they can't be read by anyone who's intercepting them. You know your boss or whatever, uh, or if they can read them, it's much harder for them to be read. And so, two years ago and still today, we live in a world where there's a lot of people who would really, really like to be able to use encryption technology. And we would really depend, in some cases, on using encryption technology, but uh, it still doesn't happen. Those people still can't use, instead of using encrypted email, instead of sending an encrypted, encoded private email, they, s they use Skype, or they use Facebook chat, or they use Google Talk. So like, when you're contacting a friend, uh, say for, for anything, for, for a private matter or for a public matter, how many of you would rather uh, just hop on on Facebook or open Skype and just find if they're online? Just, I mean, humor me and raise your hands. Or send an encrypted email, being the, being the alternative, uh, see, uh, using PGP, for example. How many of you know how to use PGP? Okay, hacker conference, yeah. Dumb question to ask. How many of you know how to use Facebook chat? Yeah, okay, uh, ab about double the amount of PGP. If I was asking a bunch of journalists this, I would have gotten a very different answer. But the point is, um, I've been in a lot of situations where you have people who need to, who y you go and train them on how to use encrypted email, on how to use encrypted instant messaging, and they don't. Because in the situation that they're in, when they need to use them, either the computer that they have the software set up on uh, is not with them right now, or the person they want to send the encrypted data to doesn't know how to use encrypted, so en encrypted instant messaging. And so there's a problem that hasn't been really uh, tackled for the past 20 years that the open source community has been developing encryption software. And the problem is we need to make these tools accessible. There's a lot of philosophy out there that says that uh, you make the encryption tools and then you teach people how to use PGP and you teach people, I mean, there's even people who are arguing that you teach, you know, a journalist or whatever to use NetBSD with like no, no GUI and like just a client text-based um, Linux system and then they're, then they're secure. But uh, what we're trying to do with CryptoCat is that we're trying to explore the limits of how much we can make encrypted software accessible. So if you know how to use Facebook chat, if you know how to use Google Talk, if you know how to use Skype, then you already know how to use CryptoCat. If you speak any one of 35 languages around the world, um, English being only one of them, then you already know how to understand the CryptoCat interface. That's um, what we're trying to do. We're trying to develop this piece of software that runs in any web browser, um, is available in 35 languages, and you can use it to chat you know, with random people, friends, uh, group chat with up to like 10 people, private chat one on one, and also send files, um, you know, images and zip files and so on. And two years in, and you know, making encryption accessible, we've discovered two very important things. The first thing is that accessibility in the form of you know, 
you know, a nice interface, you know, there a cat as a logo, colors, um, audio notifications, desktop notifications. These are not just accessibility features. These are security features. They're as much as security features as, you know, a good encryption system is a security feature. And the reason for this is that when you have these accessibility features, you, uh, these accessibility features, you eliminate the use, or you help eliminate the use case where even when you have the best crypto ever, the people can't get to it, even if they really need to, because it's not accessible enough. So accessibility and ease of use are security properties. This is the first thing we discovered. The second thing we've discovered is that way too many people are using CryptoCat, and we did a big mistake in releasing it, you know. We did a big mistake in making crypto really, really accessible while we're still developing an experimental product. Because when you want to, we made encryption really accessible and we used some really experimental frameworks and technologies to do that. And we had to tackle a whole bunch of problems that we're still tackling and suffering from today. So you have a platform whose stated goal is to make encryption accessible and we got 65,000 65,000 individuals every single month around the world are now using it. So the accessibility goal has succeeded. But in order for it to succeed, we had to tackle so many problems in making encryption accessible in the web browser. Uh, random number generation issues. Recently, we had this crazy bug that meant that group conversations were a lot easier to exploit for the past seven months. And so we're in a position where we've adopted, we've accepted as a reality that accessibility and ease of use are security features that we need to address. We need to address them as a security risk when something is inaccessible or not easy to use or it's not available in your language. But in doing so, we've opened up a platform that is already built on those, accessib uh, on those ex experimental frameworks in order to be accessible to people who still aren't as educated as, we, as we'd like them to be about the limitations of encryption. And this is really the problem that we're facing right now in CryptoCat. But on the plus side, that aside, we've, w we're have aggressively attacking a mentality in, in encryption software development that if something is risky, if something is bound to fail in order to one day succeed, then you shouldn't just, shouldn't bother trying it out. And this is, uh, this is the exact reason why accessibility and ease of use have not, have largely not improved or have very, very, very slowly, very cautiously improved, definitely not enough to keep up with the world right now when it comes to encryption software. So uh, we were very aggressive in attacking uh, the limitations of web encryption in the browser, the limitations of accessibility. W is it possible to make it, so it was, it was largely considered impossible two years ago to make it so that you could have uh, you know, a browser plugin that runs in, that, that you can download and install and be talking in a chat room immediately. And at the same time, in addressing those, in addressing those challenges, we found that yes, we are in fact leading to something. We are leading not necessarily to the replacement of the current you know, technologies that have been in development for the past 20, 30 years, like PGP, for example, and this is not the goal. But we are now in a situation where if you have someone who really needs to maintain their privacy for whatever reason, and not necessarily to overthrow a government or to be a hardcore activist, but to maintain their privacy for any reason, and their only alternative is Facebook chat or Google talk or Skype, then they now have an actual alternative to that that's, that doesn't take you know 30 minutes to learn and the other party also needs to um, know how to use it. And you both need to be computer nerds to operate it, you know, in a, in a, in a practical, realistically, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of convenient manner. And this is what we've achieved so far. We've achieved uh, for a lot of people an alternative that really can sort of bridge the gap between, oh, I don't have PGP right now. And the only thing I can rely on is Facebook chat or Google talk, which uh, if you've been following the news have really some bad surveillance policies in collaboration with the US government. Um, there's still this alternative. So in the future, what we, what we, what we really need to do right now is uh, grab a stronghold. And if, if there are any developers attending, I, this is a very varied crowd, and I'm really sorry if I was too tech more technical than I should be 
um, I'll, I, I'll have a question and answer session soon and we can talk about, you know, I can answer your questions if you, if there's anything that uh, I can explain in a, in, a, in a less technical fashion. But for the developers in the room, we really need to work on standardizing um, protocols to implement in accessible mediums. And we really we need to work not on just sticking to what we've already deemed as the okay place to run secure code, but advance to the accessible areas. Work on securing the accessible areas where you can, uh, you you can then advance the secure code too, to take advantage of accessible platforms. So CryptoCat has, in, 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 in real world situations, it's been helpful to um, LGBTQ, this, I, uh, we don't monitor you know, people who are using it, but I get emails from people who tell me stories. And uh, it's been helpful, for example, for a middle school teacher to teach um, children in her class about the importance of internet privacy, because the interface is really cute and colorful. It's been helpful for LGBTQ individuals, uh, lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, queer, oh, good, individuals, uh, to simply maintain their privacy when they're talking to counselors and so on. It's been helpful sometimes, yes, to journalists, even though it's not you know, equivalent to PGP, but you have to understand when you're on the field, sometimes really the only thing you have other than Facebook chat or, 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 or just plain email is nothing really. And so this is, this, is, this is where you need to just be pragmatic about, about what you're offering. And also, this is where the problem we run into, which is just educating people on the limitations of encryption. Because how, no matter how many warnings we put, people just keep assuming, oh, you know, encryption, it's like that hacker movie I saw in the 90s, and it's gonna protect me from everything. So this is what I'm trying to do. This is in case, you know, some developers heard uh, what I said earlier. Uh, this is what we need to get done. We need to work on standardizing encryption protocols to use in accessible mediums, and we need to secure those accessible mediums. If you use CryptoCAD or you know, know people who use CryptoCAD, this is the current situation of the project. We are an alternative to Facebook chat, not an alternative to PGP, obviously. Um, and I, s I sincerely believe that we need to start addressing the issue of just permeating encrypt accessible encryption everywhere, in every medium that we can get a hold on, uh, and addressing the problems of security in those mediums on a medium-by-medium medium basis without shying away from the fact that, yes, you will run into mistakes. And so, something I forgot to mention, um, the entire process is open source. So, the code is open for those who are new to open source. The code is completely, the programming, the research is completely open. Um, you can verify for yourself how CryptoCat works, um, whether I, the CryptoCat programmer, can read your messages if I wanted to, and I cannot, even if I wanted to, because of the way it's programmed, because of the transparency. And you can also set up your own CryptoCat networks, and it's easy to do that. So this is one advantage that we have. So that's all I have for you. I'm, I hope I've been clear in explaining my project. And um, I'm also going to be doing this thing called In Bed with Nadim. Uh, which apparently you get in bed with me and we have hot sex, so please come. And um, I'm also going to be DJing tonight um, after Null Sleep, which is uh, not an internationally renowned DJ, and I'm not intimidated at all by the fact that I, for some reason, uh, it, it was a good idea to put me right after him. So uh, I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thanks. example if I'm the new user of the, your software uh, simply uh, I just uh, made the new password and that's it you know the procedure I, I enter if I'm the new user for example of your program mm -hmm. uh, if you're a new if you're a new user for CryptoCAD it's actually that, that's where that's the accessible part it's just you go to the CryptoCAD website you download a app for your web browser so for Chrome or Firefox or Safari you download something for it and it takes five seconds, and then you can just click on the CryptoCat icon in your browser, and then you just enter a chat room and you chat, and everything is encrypted automatically. Is no, there, there's actually no uh, stable identity, so there's no username, no password. It's just you enter a nickname for yourself and the name of the room you want to join, and it doesn't remember uh, anything about you. 
So that's yeah, it's kind of uh, it's actually both uh, a good thing and a bad thing in security because it's a good thing because it doesn't remember anything about you, but it's a bad thing because that means that your the identity uh, of your keys of your encryption keys because there's a way to verify your encryption keys, and so the identity of your encryption keys will change every time which means that you will have to verify your identity to other people via your encryption keys every time, which sounds kind of complicated. But basically it means that every single time people aren't sure it's you, so they have to make sure it's you that they're talking to because every single time the program resets its information about you, right? Okay. Yes, demo. the guy from Tor. <laughs> Live demo. Uh, oh, f oh, of course, sure. I hope this computer works uh, for a live demo. I hope this computer works for a live demo. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, yay, Internet Explorer, the only browser not supported by CryptoCat, <laughs> is installed. Um, yes, I am going to uh, see if I can hook up my Macintosh computer, which I should have done earlier, were I not gifted with the foresight of a teaspoon. Um, yeah, yeah, we're fucked. Okay, yeah, no, no demo. Sorry, guy from Tor. I'm always, I'm always like, I'm really good at disappointing the Tor project. That's something that I'm awesome at. Um, okay, what? Tails. Oh, obviously. Thank you. That's some cyberpunk action right there. Um, where? How do make? How to? Okay, I am going to reboot this computer I don't own into a different operating system and hope that I'm not wasting anyone's time. Um, while it's doing that questionable activity, I will continue answering questions. Brigitta has a question. Yeah, hi, thanks for what you do. Thanks um, for what you do. <laughs> so, uh, do you plan to develop in, into uh, other platforms or you know like an so there's uh, do I plan to develop into other platforms uh, we already have an app for Mac but that's simply because I already know how to develop for Mac so it's like a random thing but the actual question is uh, the actual devel uh, platform would be mobile phones really the next like s logical one and there's been a lot of push both from research funders who fund CryptoCat research users my mother, everyone literally like wants CryptoCAD on their iPhone, on their Android, and I've always said very repeatedly no. Even though I could get a lot of research funding for it very easily, uh, and I get a lot more users, but it's a very, very bad idea to push into more platforms right now because we already have so many headaches with the current platform. And just uh, to do this like as a cheap tactic to attract users is like really not like from, a, from an engineering perspective really irresponsible because um, the browser platform that we chose uh, was chosen because it's really like the most accessible platform, you have to agree. There's no platform in the world more accessible than the web browser. And this was a very conscious choice. Uh, but it meant that we had to address a lot of, and we have addressed, in fact, which is really cool, a lot of the problems that comes with securing encrypted chat programs in the browser, because the browser was never made to, to, run, to run the kind of code that you know, CryptoCat needs in order to be safe. So one, one, one good example about uh, a problem that we uh, recently uh, solved in the current uh, browser situation. So for example, in cryptography, in order to, to have secure encryption, you need to generate uh, unpredictable random numbers. And computers are like, you know, robots. Robots aren't good at being random. So computers usually use the time to, you know, it's okay, it's 12 o'clock, so I'm gonna generate a random number that says, uh, how much time do I have left? Okay, thank you. Um, it rebooted straight back into Windows. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, the computer says, if the time is 12 o'clock, I'm going to generate the random number 5, and I'm going to give you 5. But that's predictable. So that's one of the problems with the web browser. So what we ended up doing was pushing Mozilla and Google into implementing more secure random number generation into the browser, which uses stuff like the speed of your fan and the heat of your BIOS or whatever. Well, no, that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, the heat of your, you know, bridge or something, and uses, you know, it's it's more unpredictable, basically. Yes. Can you talk about the threat model you're using for CryptoCat? Right. Wh when shouldn't you use it? Were you here for the? Uh, I s I talked about that in the talk. Okay. Um, so when should you not use CryptoCat? 
Um, you sh there's actually a very simple way to answer that question for the layperson if someone asks you this. Is your only alternative to CryptoCat right now in your situation, is your only alternative Skype or Facebook chat or Google Talk or s a similar service? If yes, use CryptoCat. If you have a better alternative, such as uh, PGP, some versions of OTR, I am very skeptical about Pigeon OTR personally, and I, to the point where I'm not even comfortable saying it's more secure than CryptoCat. Um, Lip Purple. No, it's fine. It's not OTR, but still, yeah. But CryptoCat is not the browser either. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You're, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right, Arturo, you're right. Um, but, okay, so it's still like Pigeon OTR has this problems, different discussion, you know, lots of shouting and banging heads against each other, you know, we're ha a typical day in the hacker community. Um, but, uh, yes, if you, if you have access to PGP, OTR, and other platforms, then no, no, don't use CryptoCAD. If you have access, for example, to Moxie Marlin Spikes' uh, Tech Secure, Red Phone, uh, Gibberbot by The Guardian Project, there's a lot of, you know, this is not, this is not what CryptoCAD is made for. It might work like that in like five years from now. We might get to a great point where, you know, browser security is awesome. And I believe we can do that. But um, right now, it's meant to be a replacement to just the very basic, me like very, that's why it works in the browser, because the other platforms it's meant to replace are also browser platforms, Facebook chat and Google talk and so on, except for Skype. And yeah, that's, that's the answer to that question. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm c I can do a live demo, but uh, I'm gonna take more questions, I'm not ending the talk, but basically, uh, if you wanna uh, try it out, I have stickers here that have the website on the back, which is crypto.cat, and I will give you a sticker and you can check it out, or you can go meet me in, in bed with Nadim, which is where you can have hot sex with me and I will also give you a sticker. Um, but, what? Yes, and an STD, as Smari points out. Uh, I don't have STD, I don't, why did I repeat that? It's kind of self-deprecating. I do not, in fact, uh, okay, uh, next question. Uh, any more questions? Hopefully not from Smari. <laughs> Mark has a question. Do you use WebRTC features in your software? And if not, do you plan to in the future? Great question. Do I use WebRTC and do I plan to in the future? Y uh, that's, a, that's a great question because yes, we have been looking into, we don't use it right now. I have been looking into using WebRTC features. So WebRTC is this like really new uh, browser technology that lets you uh, do audio video chat between browsers and it has encryption built in. And so right now, the reason we began investigating using it and we looked into the encryption scheme, which comes like already done. We don't have to do any work on that, which is incredible. Uh, and it uses an encryption scheme called DTLS SRTP. And so there is some sort of discussion going on. We're not sure whether that's good enough to be used. Uh, there's a better version of SRTP called ZRTP, which solves some of the key exchange problems in SRTP. And so uh, we s like it's it's still in the mailing list stage right now. And so like. Eventually, I need to talk to some people who wrote the specification at Google and Mozilla, and then we figure it out. But uh, ultimately, uh, WebRTC would be like a really cool addition if we can figure it. Uh, we need to figure out the encryption stuff, but also we need to figure out the implementation and usability stuff because um, the current CryptoCat relies on XMPP, and WebRTC is like a completely different uh, like sort of framework, and so you have to make them both accessible in the same interface. And so that's a UI, that's a user interface and user experience challenge, which is a lot of what CryptoCat is about. So, it's g but yeah, like WebRTC is really interesting. Uh, that's a great question. Thanks. Um. Oh, Bilal Ghalib is a sexy hot man. Okay, he he installed CryptoCat on his. Do I have more time? Okay, I had five minutes five minutes ago, but that's great. Um, let's see if we can get this into Bilal's laptop from the back. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm really like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm saying sometimes, right? Like it's, uh, oh, the mirror screen, wait. 
There it is. OK, cool. So uh, the way I launched this, this is, this is Google Chrome. And I downloaded CryptoCat from the website. And here it is. It's an application. And so you just launch it, and you have the CryptoCat user interface here. And you just enter a conversation name and your nickname. So, and you can choose a language here, by the way. It's available in all these languages. So a conversation name would be Lobby, which is the, like, this, this room is always full. Uh, so I'm just going to use it for tests. And hopefully, there will be some nicer people there than last time. And um, the nickname is going to be uh, Not Nadim. So it's genera while generating the encryption keys, CryptoCat gives you very interesting cat facts to keep you distracted. So for example, cats can be right pod or left pod. Uh, that, see, that was cool. It worked. Um, so this is the chat room. And everything in it is automatically encrypted. So this guy is typing a message. This other guy is typing a message. That's why there's keyboard animations. And this guy just joined. And I can say, for example, um, hello. Who is Francis Drake is a question that's being asked in CryptoCat right now in this chat room. I am using CryptoCat. So this is a really important feature that I want to uh, unveil today. Uh, this is the best feature in all of CryptoCat. The emoticons are cats. So this really helps with the encryption. And actually, it's, uh, it's really why uh, CryptoCat is unbreakable. And well, not really, but it's, it's cute. You know, you have like sad cat and um, tongue cat. And OK, I should be showing better stuff. Um, so if you, this is the main chat room. And there's a lot of people talking. And uh, you can like click on a person to have a private conversation with them. And uh, you can set yourself to away, for example, here. This is your. Uh, fingerprints, which you can use to identify yourself. And this is why it's kind of a bad thing, because CryptoCat doesn't remember your encryption keys, because these fingerprints will change every time. So this is like, it's a good thing, because it's stateless, but it's also kind of an annoying thing. So it's, it's open for debate. Um, there's also accessibility features like audio notifications, desktop notifications. So I'm going to increase the volume on Bilal's laptop somehow. Oh, it's already up. But oh, we're not getting audio for some reason. Well, you usually you would hear some sound. Um, are, is there anyone from the conference currently on this room? Because I can then demo file sharing. Oh, Smaury, thank you. What's your nickname? Oh, you're a kitten. OK. Uh, the mouse cursor. OK, so I can click on kitten's nickname, and I can click on send encrypted file. And uh, then I can send Smari a file. Or he can send me a file, because I don't want to send you some of Bilal's files, which would be invade Bilal's privacy. And invading people's privacy is not a good thing to do when you're presenting encryption software. But I wouldn't put it past me, really. Uh, so Smari, send me something that's PG-13, hopefully. Oh, yay, sounds. Uh, I don't know if you can hear them, but the audio notifications are working. Any more questions while Smalley sends a file? Let's you know make the most out of this. Okay, so we're stopping. Uh, thank you for letting. Uh, thank you for uh, the organizers for letting me go for approximately three times as much as I should be going. Thank you all for listening and for uh, bearing with my demo. So as I said, hot sex with me in the I uh, sleep sleeping with Nadim. Uh, in bed with Nadim thing. And I'm also DJing tonight at the pub that starts with Z, Zlabov, Zivot, which means life. And uh, after null sleep, which is not intimidating. But please be there. It's going to be nice. Thank you.